Dan and Amy. By the way, did you see that uh, Bears Packers game? How empty Soldier Field was? Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, I they offered us free tickets and go to the family room and all that, and I said no. Nah. But I wasn't feeling well. But my kids turned down too. Yeah. My neighbors, we were calling all day Saturday and Sunday to try and find people to go to the game, even up to game. Yeah, I think it has something to do, as this song would indicate, something to do with the product on the field. But. Uh, also may have something to do with the NFL generally, by the way. Oh, yeah, but Roger Goodell thinks he's deserved of uh, $50 million a year, and he wants a private jet for life. Yeah, same so, deal I made here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one, one good thing about yesterday, Marquise Goodwin, he plays for the 49ers. He made an 83-yard touchdown, or he caught an 83-yard touchdown pass. Yesterday morning, his son died. He was born prematurely, and he could not get out of the end zone. And if you guys want to cry... <laughs> Just watch that video because that will make you cry. Hmm. And it was really beautiful how everybody picked him up and hugged him and then took him to the sidelines. And right after the game, he left to be with his family. So God bless him and his baby. Well, uh, uh, turning tragedy into something positive is also uh, what uh, our friend Gerard McClendon is trying to do. Uh, he had former uh, Chicago newsman, uh, CLTV, and now he's a filmmaker. And you'll remember the McClendon name um, in part because of the tragic circumstances around the death of his parents uh, in Hammond, Indiana, after celebrating their 54th wedding anniversary, this is back in 2009, Wayman and Ruby McClendon were murdered by two teen gang members during a home invasion. Now, those uh, gang members, unlike so many, were thankfully caught and both sentenced to, I think, like 120 years in prison. Um, But now McClendon has uh, made a documentary on uh, this uh, devastating event in his life and, frankly, the lives of uh, the, the entire Chicagoland community uh, to see uh, uh, a lovely couple like his parents murdered. Uh, the, the name of the documentary, Forgiving Cain, and uh, it focuses on trying to forgive a murderer. The film explores questions like, can you? What is the definition of forgiveness? What is the purpose of forgiveness? What is a human being worth? Is preventing murder a priority? doesn't seem to be in Chicago. So uh, provocative questions, thoughtful questions, and I'm sure uh, thoughtful reflections from uh, Gerard McClendon, who joins us now. Thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. Dan, thanks a bunch, man. I really appreciate you. Thank you. So, um, you know, to talk about uh, a little bit of the journey from that uh, catastrophic catastrophic event in your life to uh, putting together this documentary. Yeah, you know, uh, Forgiving Cain, the impossible possibility of ending murder has is, is been a personal journey, you know, for our whole family. I mean, it was a devastating um, case of events that took place back in 2009. And, and uh, you know, it was something that hit me, man, as I'm driving home after I got the news. I was working at CLTVWGN at the time, and when I got the news, uh, I drove home to my parents' home. And uh, I'm on the Dan Ryan Expressway, Dan, and at 5.30 in the afternoon, there was no traffic on the Dan Ryan. Wow. At 5.30. It, you know, um, uh, even more mysterious, uh, when I get to 35th Street, when I get to Sox Park, the sun comes out, and this vision hit me, Dan, where it's like when you get to your parents' house, Gerard, there's going to be a crime scene, there's going to be yellow and red tape. Um, there's going to be uh, TV reporters, cameras, everyone's going to be there, family. And um, something hit me, man, 35th Street, I'm on the expressway, and I'm talking to my producer on the phone, and and something told me, forgive the perpetrators, Dan. Forgive the per- – they weren't even caught at that point. But it was something that told me, if I don't let this thing go, I would be out of my mind. And uh, from that day forth, man, the day I found out that my parents were murdered, man, I forgave the perpetrators. Even not knowing who they were at the time? Absolutely. We found out uh, their charges were brought on the day of the funeral, so like six or seven days later, charges were brought. And, well, um, what were they, what was their, re- I mean, obviously there's no ever a reason to kill, but what, why couldn't they have just... I mean, it just, it makes no sense. What did they try and take? Just explain, take us back to that time and what, what happened. Oh, it, 
it's ridiculous. So ev- evidently, these two, they're very young. I mean, 17 and 18 at the time. I think one of the young men knew my parents. Um, you know, and, and I guess they thought my parents had something or, you know, yes, my dad drove a Cadillac and, you know, they had a few nice things. But, but, but it, was, it was the kind of thing where my parents would have given them the seventy dollars that they stole, you know, $70. they took some jewelry. Uh, they 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 took my parents' car uh, for a joyride. You know, uh, <laughs> my parents were giving people. You know, everybody in East Hammond, Indiana, knew that. And and for these young men to do that, uh, it was just uh, tragic. Have you ever uh, confronted them? Did you uh, make any statements during the sentencing hearing? Yes, uh, we did. You know, the family did make our statements, and you know, I wrote like a two and a half to three minute statement, uh, talking directly to the perpetrators, and uh, you know, just expressing discontent and uh, disappointment and anger. You know, but uh, in the courtroom, you know, I I, uh, I still forgave forgave them. You did know, they uh, apologize to it's you? Just, it's, it's just sad. It's just sad. Two, you know, two young black men. You know, uh, they got ABK uh, tattoos like a week before they killed my parents. You know, ABK, anybody killer. You know, um, one of the young men was supposed to be going, I think, to Purdue University that fall. I guess chose not to and hooks up with his buddy and they decide to uh, rob two elderly people. You know, really? You know, really? 120 years sentence? Did really? they ask for your forgiveness you know, it, or it, mercy it, before, during the sentencing? I'm sorry? Did they ask for your forgiveness or just say, we are so, I'm so sorry? They expressed, you know, uh, sorrow and, um, you know, uh, but in, a, in a courtroom, it's just, you're kind of dumb to that. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it just didn't really seem sincere. But, you know, it didn't make a difference to me one way or the other. I mean, I was going to forgive them regardless. Take us uh, through the film. Again, it's uh, Forgiving Cain, this documentary that you've put together. And uh, I, I mentioned at the outset some of the issues it raises. How do you try and tackle these issues so that, um, you know, to obviously uh, try and uh, advance the uh, notion of Mm-hmm. of getting along with one another, particularly in major urban centers like Chicago, of staying away from gangs and drugs and the violence that's attendant so that uh, another young man like yourself doesn't have to lose his parents in that way. Absolutely. You know, we interviewed 22 families who lost a loved one to gun violence. About 20 out of the 22 families forgave the perpetrator. There were uh, one or two families that still haven't come to grips with forgiving uh, the killers of their loved ones. Uh, we've also interviewed, uh, you know, philosophy classics professors, uh, uh, psychology professors to find out what is the core, uh, what is the nucleus of someone forgiving someone. And we're finding that for some people it's religion, others it's spiritual, uh, for others it's I gotta let this go or else it'll eat me alive. I mean, so everybody has different reasons for forgiving. And I think everybody has different time periods as well. For me, it was immediate. Uh, for others, it may take 10, 20 years. It may take a lifetime. What about the uh, uh, addressing the issue of Chicago violence? Uh, I, I know that you pour over the statistics and try and convey them in human terms, which is what uh, needs to happen. But, uh, uh, you know, some of what comes from the film in terms of what can be done to quell the uh, incidents of violent crime in Chicago. You know, it's a perfect storm. I mean, you got guns coming in from Indiana. Um, you have stolen guns on the street. Guns get passed around. Uh, people sell contraband or people want to control territory. They shoot people. Uh, we've seen probably a decrease in drug sales in urban communities because of legalization. And so what's happening is a lot of people can't sell drugs on the street anymore. So you're seeing what? More carjackings in the news lately. You're seeing more you're seeing more crash and grabs lately. And generally a person is brandishing a firearm. Wow. Why is your documentary called Forgiving Kane? Yes. Because uh, the perpetrators forgiving. are Thompson and Brooks, so I was just curious. Kane and Abel, perhaps. Kane and Abel. That's 
Yeah, that's that's correct. We, you know, forgiving Cain, of course, the biblical reference to uh, Cain uh, killing Abel. And uh, and even though a person may have a cold and dark heart, you know, there's still a realm of forgiveness that has to take place so we can continue to advance civilization. It's one thing to say, okay, I want revenge. It's another thing to say, you know what, I'm going to forgive and let's heal. Now, I think sometimes what people do is they, they mistake forgiveness for an act of weakness. And it's not weakness at all. So, you know, well, how can you forgive these guys? You don't want these guys to go to prison? Of course I want them to go to prison. You know, the justice system dealt with the two young men. God will also deal with the two young men. So they already have two forces against them. I don't need to be against them as the third. I just need to forgive so I can live my own life. That's why I have to forgive Cain. So how can people uh, see this uh, documentary, Forgiving Cain? So we're in, we're editing and we're in post production now. We're in our fundraising campaign uh, at forgivingcane.com. It'll be on PBS in the spring of 2018. And when it launches, we'll make sure that the world knows and that we'll try to get people uh, to forgive something as large as murder and to forgive something as small as someone taking your milk money when you were seven years old. You know, that's the thing. It seems like it's easier for people to forgive bigger things than it is for smaller things. People like to hold grudges. People uh, haven't spoken to someone in 30 years. You know, that stuff is ridiculous, and it only eats us up inside. And so that's what the film focuses on. You know, we have to forgive our fellow man, our fellow woman, and we have to live our lives as as well as we have to let others live there. He is Gerard McClendon. He is a former uh, TV newsman, a TV producer, now filmmaker. The movie Forgiving Cain, forgivingcain.com, a uh, documentary that's uh, forthcoming in the spring of next year. But you can get more information and provide support for its distribution at forgivingcain.com. Gerard, thanks so much for joining us. Good luck with the film. Appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate you. Take care now. And he joined us in our turnkey.pro answer line. If 